Howdy guys, welcome to part seven in the Advanced Workflows course. We're gonna talk mixing frame rates today. Frame rates are a pretty big deal. In part seven, we're gonna take a quick look at how they can affect the look of your footage and how best to handle mixing them together inside the same sequence. So a frame rate or a time base determines how many frames are in one second of video. 2398 or 23976 uses 24 frames to one second of video where 2997 uses 30 frames to a second. These are the most common NTSC time bases, which leads us to the question, what is NTSC? Well, NTSC is the North American broadcast standard, which is different from basically the rest of the entire world that uses PAL or PAL. Common PAL time bases are 25 and 50, but that is unfortunately where my experience with PAL ends. So back to the NTSC frame rates. 2398 is my preferred frame rate because of the cinematic quality that it has, and it's essentially the industry standard around Hollywood. Because of the additional frames that 2997 has, it gives the video more of a lifelike quality. Think of something you would see on the news or a soap opera. So most broadcast deliveries for television, shows, commercials, movies, etc., are still required to be in 2997. We'll talk more about that later in the course. If you don't know what frame rate to use on a project, a good place to start is to edit in the same frame rate that the majority of your footage was shot in. Where that doesn't apply is when your footage was shot at high frame rates like 5994, 120, 240, and so on. High frame rate footage, if it wasn't conformed in camera, needs to be conformed before editorial starts. Now, conforming footage is a way of taking one type of video and manipulating it so that it behaves like another type of video. Let's dig a little bit deeper into that. One way of conforming one frame rate to another is to change its interpolation method. Interpolation is a fancy word for how the NLE estimates what missing frames should look like in footage. But wait, where, where do their frames go? Why are we estimating frames? Well, missing frames happen when changing the footage timing, like adding 2398 footage into a 2997 timeline. For a one second clip, the 2398 footage is six frames shorter than a 2997 clip. So our NLE, Premiere in this case, needs to make up for those missing frames by interpolating them. Another instance when this occurs is when footage is intentionally slowed down or sped up in an edit. Now in Premiere, we can choose the interpolation method we want our footage to have clip by clip via the clip speed duration tool. Or we can change the interpolation of an entire sequence when we're exporting. There's a few interpolation methods to choose from and what you pick ultimately depends on your taste. Frame sampling duplicates frames to make up for the missing frames in our footage. Frame blending mixes frames together to make a new frame an optical flow estimates the vectors or the motion and speed of the pixels to generate a new frame. The best way to learn the differences between these three methods is to honestly just play around with them and see how they affect your footage. Different clips and different action within the clips is going to change how these methods look. The best way to learn the differences between all these methods is to simply play around with them with a bunch of different clips. All right, so the best way to really understand interpolation is to look at it in the timeline. So to do that, I'm gonna grab these coaching and training clips that we've been working with, and I'm gonna sort them by the frame rate. Now, if we look at that, we can tell that inside this bin, we have about half the clips that are 2398 and half the clips that are 5994. I'm gonna grab all of the 5994 clips and I'm gonna change their label color. And we're gonna change it to mango, I think. That'll be good. Um, just so that we know exactly what we're looking at. I'm gonna select all these clips and drag them into my timeline. And then I'm gonna add all of the mango clips together. Suck this up and get rid of that. Okay, great. So let's ignore the 2398 clips at the moment. And we're gonna jump down to our 5994 clips. All right, that'll be that'll probably be pretty good right there. So that's a good move. Let's zoom in. Now, let's grab this and I'm gonna take and move all these clips out of the way. With this clip selected, I'm going to open my speed duration tool. So with that, I can change this to 40%. Now, if you do the math on 60 FPS footage, if you slow it down by 40%, it actually converts precisely into 2398. Pretty cool. So now what we need to worry about is the time interpolation. Right now we've got frame sampling, so we'll say okay. Now this will probably look pretty good, because, like I just said, we converted it precisely into 2398 footage.
and you can see how it's playing back much slower than before, but it's still really, really smooth. Now, what if we go to one of our 2398 clips? So let's find another clip with some good action that's 2398. Let's see, come through here. There we go, we'll find something in this. Even that little move right there will be good to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna add an edit, jump in, move these clips down a little bit so we have some room to work, jump back into my speed duration tool, and I'm gonna change this to 40% and let's see what happens under frame sampling. Say okay. Now when I play this back, look at how choppy this movement is. It's very choppy. And that's because there's no additional frames to actually work with inside of Premiere. So Premiere is duplicating frames, which causes that choppiness. Now, if we change that interpolation to say frame blending, what does that do? To see this, we're actually gonna have to render that clip. So we'll render it real quick. And now play it back. So this looks maybe a little bit better, but you can see now there's kind of this weird flowiness to it. It's got this um, almost superimposed look to it as the motion happens. And this is because the new frames that Premiere is creating is actually a mix of the A frame and the B frame to make a A.5 frame, if that makes sense. Now, the last option that we have is optical flow. It finds the vectors of the individual pixels and predicts where they're gonna go to create new frames in between our A and B frames. Let's see how that looks. So it really doesn't look too bad. You can kind of see a little bit of distortion around here, around some of the areas with higher movement, but overall, it looks pretty good on this clip. Optical flow can be used in some situations, but you have to be really careful of it. Now, to come back to the main point that I was trying to make with interpolation, it's used best whenever we have high frame rate footage, like this 60 frames per second clip that we convert down to 2398. See how smooth and fluid this is? Okay, let's jump back and talk about another way to modify this footage. Hey, look, we're back to this slide. It's an important one. Another way of conforming footage is by changing its interpretation. Interpreting footage tells Premiere to treat footage differently than the way that it was shot or the way it was created. So if you have a bunch of 2997 clips that you need to drop into a 2398 timeline, you can try interpreting them to 2398. Premiere will then pretend that the 2997 clip is actually 2398. So the 30 frames that it takes to make the clip gets stretched out over a 24 frame time base. This then effectively slows the clip down by about 20%. So it's slightly slower, but playback in a 2398 sequence is pretty and smooth. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, looking back at our clips again, I wanna show you another way that we can modify this footage, but do it in batches. This is probably my preferred method for handling high frame rate footage. So what we can actually do is tell Premiere to interpret this 5994 footage, this 60 frames per second footage into 2398. So if we select these clips, right click them and say modify, interpret footage. In here, we have the option to click assume this frame rate and change it to 23976 and say okay. Now when we do that look, all of our clips down here just changed all of a sudden and that's because they slowed down. So what was 60 frames per second or 5994 frames per second has been slowed down to 2398 frames per second and looks buttery smooth. So if we want to see all of these clips, let's delete those. Now that this has been converted to 2398, we can pull them and drag them all into our sequence. And, and you'll see that they all play back slow and smooth. This is a great method for handling multiple clips that are high frame rate that you need to convert all at once. And hey, we're back to this slide again. Yes, but we're almost done. The last method of conforming that I want to mention is a hardware conversion. Hardware, like the Blackmagic Terranix, can conform video into a different broadcast standard in real time. It's an expensive tool, but it's one that you should at least know about. Okay, moving on. Interlaced footage. It's not as common of an issue as it used to be, but chances are you're going to come across it at some point, especially if you do any work with historical footage or documentaries. Back in the day, video frames used to be broken down further into two separate fields to save bandwidth when it was being broadcast over the airwaves. When interlaced footage is played back in an NLE and on computers, it can cause little jagged lines around the moving objects. 
You see this most often in fast-paced movements, like sports. Modern NLEs have ways of removing or at least reducing interlacing. In Premiere, you can do so by jumping into the clip menu and clicking Video Options, Field Options, then choose a de-interlacing method. Personally, I found out that flicker removal works the best, but this really is clip dependent, so try them all to get the best result. So we're going to jump in and talk about this clip real quick. Um, it has nothing to do with the rest of the project other than that it's interlaced. So what exactly is interlaced footage? Well, if you look at my cursor and follow around these black edges of these people out in the water, you'll see we have these little jagged lines. Now, if we play through, it's not super noticeable. We can play it back and it's OK. But in all honesty, you don't want to see that because it just looks bad. And when we export the video, those lines will be there, too. So the way that we deal with this is we can select this clip inside of Premiere, go to Clip, Video Options, Field Options, and then say Always the Interlace or Flicker Removal. Depending on the clip, you'll get better results with one or the other. Now, I'm going to stick with Always the Interlace for this option, and you'll see those jagged lines just went away like that. Super quick, and the clip plays back perfectly. Cool. All right, next up in the Advanced Workflows course is learning how to work with transcripts, scripts, and editing interviews. See you in part eight.